What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about replay attacks. And the replay attacks is a very relevant topic nowadays because we will see a new Bitcoin hard fork in November. As you probably know, Segwit2x hard fork will take place at block number this number 494,784 and this block will be mined approximately at the in the end of November uh, and so whenever we have a hard fork whenever we have a blockchain a ledger and it hard forks which basically copies this ledger and now we continue with two ledgers which have the same history up to this day when they forked. Whenever this happens, there is a vulnerability and the chance for replay attacks. And different hard forks deal with this problem differently. So Segwit2x has their own replay protection. Bitcoin Cash, when they split from Bitcoin in August, uh, August the 1st, they, ha they have had their own replay protection and they currently have it as well and so today we're going to talk about how replay attacks work why they are a problem how you would execute such an attack and how different projects or different forks deal with this so how did bitcoin cash deal with this issue how did uh, how will segwit 2x fork deal with this issue. Before we start, I would like to show you my new website, which is ivanontech.com. And this website is mainly for speaking gigs. So guys, if you have a conference or an event in your city or in your country, and you would like to see me on stage, make sure that the organizers know that you are interested because I would love to come. I would love to meet you in person. And you can send the organizers this website, ivanontech.com, where they can learn about me and uh, hopefully get interested and invite me to their conference because I would love to come I would love to meet you in person I would like to help you and your organization your company and it would be just so so fun to meet all of you guys in some conference in your country that would be amazing so ivanontech.com make sure that the organizers know that you are interested and so that I, I actually get invited that being said guys let's get into the video let's start by refreshing our knowledge about hard forks so if you go to investopedia and you search for hard fork you will find this image which i think illustrates the issue pretty well so as you can see we have a chain of blocks the a square is a block and they are cryptographically linked together i have done a screenshot here just to be able to draw and so as you can see we have something going on here and we have here a hard fork meaning that we have done changes to the protocol and these changes these new rules are not compatible with the old rules we have here what does it mean it means that if we continue mining this chain with the old rules and some people decide to hard fork and invent new rules and they have uh, mining support on their chain as well we will end up in a chain split meaning that some people will run this chain uh, and some people will run this chain now a very important thing to note here is that both chains will share this history up to this uh, hard fork uh, point so the blockchains would look like this we have blockchain number one which is this uh, uh, upper upper <laughs> line which is this blue line this is the uh, legacy blockchain as some people call it it really is um, a political name legacy or not legacy but basically this is the original blockchain that uh, existed before and it it still follows the old rules and the red one is the new blockchain and as you can see it still has the history here up to the hard fork so it still has these old blocks in its ledger and then the hard fork happens and all the blocks from now on are new blocks with new rules and uh, from uh, from the day of the hard fork in the old chain we just follow the old rules and so this is exactly what happened in bitcoin and bitcoin cash bitcoin is this blue line and bitcoin cash hard forked increasing the block size creating the new rules here these new rules are not compatible with the old rules and so this means that we have a chain split and because bitcoin cash has some mining support they're still able to sustain this chain and mine new blocks and continue surviving 
And this is the basic knowledge we need to have about hard forks, that at some day we have new rules and the chain splits if it has mining support and people mine this new chain, but it shares the same uh, history up to the day of the fork. Now, this last thing I said about sharing history is quite important, because if you have two Bitcoin, or let's say you have 10 Bitcoin here, uh, in the old chain, after the fork, you would also have 10 Bitcoin in the new chain. And uh, this might sound awesome, which it is. I mean, uh, Bitcoin Cash was basically free money if you had the Bitcoin and now you also have Bitcoin Cash and both of them uh, go up in value. So, uh, so far, so good. However, here is where it becomes hairy because I still use the same private key in order to sh to sign transactions on the old chain as on the new chain. So if I would like to send you some Bitcoin cash or some this some of this forked uh, Bitcoin, maybe it's Bitcoin Segwit 2x when it forks, wh whatever fork, if I want to send you some coins on this forked blockchain, I would still use my old private keys if I want to access my current Bitcoin that I have uh, now that the chain has split. And so when I do that, I sign the transaction, I broadcast it to the network, to the Bitcoin Cash network or to Segwit2x uh, network, which will come online in November. And uh, the problem is that because I use the same private key to sign a transaction, someone could take that transaction that I just signed and broadcasted on the Bitcoin Cash network on, or on Segwit2x network, on this forked network, they could take that and broadcast it on the main Bitcoin network, on the original network, on the blue network, so to speak. As you can see guys, it is, it, it, theoretically this works because the same private key is used. So I have a transaction on the new network, on the new chain. Someone takes that transaction, broadcasts it on the old chain or on the original chain, whatever you want to call it. And that transaction will be accepted there as well because the private keys are the same for me. And here is where we have an issue. And this is what we call replay attacks that you do some transaction on one network because you have the same private keys on the old network. Someone could take that and replay it on the old network or vice versa. I would like to focus on Segwit2x and show you this article by Jimmy Song where he talks about Segwit2x replay protection because there has been talks and has been some debate about their choice of replay protection and so we are going to talk more about that and the difference between how Segwit2x will implement replay protection versus how Bitcoin Cash implemented replay protection. There are two types of replay protections. There is opt-in and there is strong replay protection. So strong two-way replay protection means that transactions from chain X are never valid on chain Y after the fork. And uh, here we can talk about how Bitcoin Cash solved this replay issue because they solved it with uh, a strong protection. They added a flag, basically a special mark in their transactions, meaning that if this transaction that I sent you on Bitcoin Cash, if someone would take that and show it to the main Bitcoin network, uh, that transaction would be rejected because the main Bitcoin network would just look at it and think there is some kind of mark, there is some kind of flag here that we do not recognize, so we will just ignore this. And if you take a Bitcoin transaction and show it on Bitcoin Cash network, they will look at it and say there is no mark, we don't recognize it, we need a mark <laughs> for, for our transactions to work on Bitcoin Cash, so we will ignore it as well. Uh, so Bitcoin Cash achieved this through marking the signatures, uh, which every transaction requires. This made transactions on their chain invalid on Bitcoin and vice versa. So this is strong replay protection because uh, there is no way for anyone to accidentally be exposed to replay attacks. Uh, the protocol ensures that replay attacks are not possible. Uh, so th there, there is strong replay protection and there is opt-in replay protection. Opt-in replay protection means that transactions from chain X need to do something special to be invalid from chain Y. So by default they are not 
they are not invalid. They need to do something special to be invalid on the other chains. Uh, that is by default transactions are exposed to replay attacks, but if you manipulate your transaction in a certain way, the transaction will not be valid on chain Y. Opt-in replay protection is more like a door you have to remember to lock, because otherwise the transactions may escape to the other chain. Why is there so much talk about replay protection and Segwit2x? Well, the thing is, Segwit2x have decided to do this opt-in replay protection, meaning that in order to make a transaction that is only valid on segwit 2 exchange, you would have to do some extra steps that are mentioned here. The issue is, uh, because this is an issue to the main Bitcoin network, the issue is that not everyone will know about replay attacks, not everyone will watch my videos, not everyone will read Jimmy Song's articles, meaning that some people would not know that this is possible, that they are vulnerable to this attack, meaning that they will just spend their bitcoins on the SegWit fork, on the SegWit 2x fork, the network, and someone would just be able to replay these transactions on the original network, which is of course bad as it might create chaos, it might create, create misunderstanding, people might not know what is happening, how come I just spent some SegWit2x bitcoins and now uh, my real bitcoins are gone as well in the same way. Uh, so this is the issue that we are facing. So SegWit2x developers decided on a part particular opt-in replay protection scheme as in the pull request above. And so here we have the pull request. As you can see, the code for this replay protection is not that much. I mean, to, to add replay protection in this way is quite, quite easy. And so Alice, after, when sending coins on the legacy chain to Bob, will have to send a small amount to this address in order for the transactions to be invalid on the 2x chain. So if I'm sending some Bitcoin on the main chain, uh, on the main Bitcoin chain, not on the SegWit 2x chain, I would have to send a small amount to this address and this would make this transaction invalid on the SegWit 2x chain. And so Jimmy also writes, this address was chosen because it's somewhat easy to see visually because it starts with 3-bit uh, here. And it's easy enough to spend since the private key is well known. So why don't SegWit2x just add normal replay protection just like Bitcoin Cash did? And uh, theoretically it might sound easy that you just add some kind of check mark, you add some kind of flag to the protocol and that all transactions done in SegWit2x would have this flag, meaning that they're invalid in other chains and transactions from other chains will be invalid in SegWit2x chain. However, that would require wallets to upgrade. And because SegWit feel that they, SegWit2x developers feel that they are going to be the majority chain, uh, they want all current wallets that exist in the Bitcoin ecosystem to be compatible with 2x and not require upgrades. So this is the reason they do not want to add strong replay protection. Uh, when Bitcoin Cash forked on August the 1st, there were almost, almost no wallets that supported Bitcoin Cash specifically because they had replay protection uh, and they had this strong replay protection. And because wallet developers hadn't had a chance to code in the adjustments required to make transactions valid on Bitcoin Cash. And SegWit2x is trying to avoid this by making transactions work with current Bitcoin wallets. So there is two sides of the coin. I mean, you it, it's one way is to think that SegWit2x is responsible, they are basically responsible to the Bitcoin community and they should add this strong replay protection. But uh, at the same time, you see that would create problems for them. And so it's, um, uh, it's, it's a decision they had to make. So how do you keep your coin safe? You might be wondering. So after the fork, what you do is that you take your Bitcoin core Bitcoins and you send them to some other address that you then you currently have. And when you do this transaction, you make sure to send a small amount to the special address that we talked about before. This would make the transaction invalid on the SegWit2x chain, on the SegWit2x network, meaning that no one will be able to replay it. And this way you keep your coins safe. 
and after that you can take the coins on your Segwit2x chain and you can transfer them to some other account as well and this way you would have now your own wallet, your new wallet on the 2x network and your new wallet on the Bitcoin core network and now they will be decoupled meaning that your coins are safe. And you can read more about um, this whole article on Jimmy Song's Medium if you want to uh, learn more. And I really recommend his Medium. I read it now and then. Uh, and it's really, really useful for me. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Do you think that th this is worrying that segwit 2 do not have a strong replay protection? And if you are a new viewer, and you like blockchain, technology, cryptocurrencies, you should definitely subscribe to the channel. My name is Ivan, I'm a software developer, and I'll see you guys next time.